Rob Bryanton, back once again, your old floating head here next to uh, one of the poll questions from the Imagining the Tenth Dimension blog. Uh, if you'd like to read along with this entry, uh, the entry is dated November 8th, 2008, and uh, you can read along with it uh, there. I invite you to do so because there's often lots of links uh, within the blog that uh, take you to additional conversations about, uh, about the information we're discussing here. Now this poll question that we're talking about today uh, finished on October 4th, 2008, and uh, was actually tied to another blog entry called We're Already Dead, But That's Okay. Uh, poll 24, the question was, The Deutsch team at Oxford have proved that parallel universes resulting from chance and choice really exist. In a number of those, each of us have already died. And 79% uh, of the visitors agreed, while the remainder disagreed. Now, uh, here's a quote from cosmologist Max Tegmark of the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, who said, The critique of many worlds is shifting from, it makes no sense and I hate it, to simply, I hate it. And uh, that's an interesting discussion. Uh, uh, Everett's Many Worlds is definitely one of the key ideas that is incorporated into the Imagining the Tenth Dimension uh, way of visualizing reality. But uh, there are still uh, different schools of thought on whether that is actually the true uh, way to interpret quantum mechanics. So this blog entry goes like this. If you're familiar with Everett's Many Worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, then I'm hoping that you recognize that concept when I used it in my original Imagining the Tenth Dimension animation. The idea that there are many possible outcomes from any particular now is easy to understand. Everyone deals with that idea every minute of their life. What if I'd stepped out in front of that car? What if I'd won that lottery? What if I'd talked to that person I recognized rather than pretending I didn't see them? Our lives are continually about a mix of choice, chance, and the actions of others. What Everett's theory proposed is that each of those other possible branches really do exist out there within the quantum wave function and that we are merely observing one reality out of the many that continue to exist. The important part of this idea is that those other universes continue to exist, they're just not within the part of the wave function that we're currently observing. Everett presented this concept way back in 1957, and although great minds like Everett's thesis advisor, John Wheeler, liked the idea, many others within the scientific mainstream ridiculed it, and the theory ended up languishing for many decades. Within the last few years, though, Everett's Many Worlds theory has received much more attention again. And, as I've said many times now in this blog, the Deutsch team's 2007 proof confirms that my use of the Many Worlds idea in my animation in my book is now more solidly based in science than it was when my project was first introduced to the world. The quote uh, from Max Tegmerk the, that I just uh, read at the start of this comes from the September 21, 2000 article in New Scientist magazine, about this proof. Uh, it was written by Zia Morali, and the article is entitled Parallel Universes Make Quantum Sense. If you're reading along in the blog, you can click to read that article. You'll see that the article talks a lot about Everett's many worlds, and the article takes the new Oxford team's proof very seriously. So seriously, in fact, that a few months later, when New Scientist was doing a roundup of the most important science stories of 2007, this proof ended up in that list. And again, you, if you're reading along in the blog, you can click to see that article now. As you'll see in this second article, thinking about branching parallel universes that make sense for our universe can be fun. I've often given examples like the version of our universe where it's 2008 and Elvis is still alive, or and dinosaurs still walk the earth. But this idea also has a serious side. If the Everett interpretation and the Deutsch team's proof are to be believed, then the conclusion proved or proposed in this poll question must be true. There must be versions of the universe where it's 2008 and you and I, or I, <laughs> dear reader, are already dead. In my blog entry, we're already dead, but that's okay. We talk more about that, what that could mean to each of us as the non-dead versions of ourselves within the many possible parallel universes that exist for our universe. In randomness in the missing 96% and unlikely events and timelessness, we also talked about the amazing set of unlikely circumstances that have resulted in the world you and I are witness to right now. This is the conclusion I reached at the end of chapter one of my book. And I'm quoting from the book now. In any dimension lower than 10, all that can be viewed of reality is cross-sections. 
that that is what makes our existence so interesting. Not the infinite white noise of possibilities, but that out of all those possibilities that could be, we are in this very specific one, right here and right now. As the quote from Max Tegmark indicated at the start of this entry, the many worlds interpretation elicits a strong and sometimes visceral, res visceral response, even though there is evidence that Everett's interpretation actually reflects how our reality comes into being, there are some people who react strongly against this idea. And one of my po most popular blog entries over the last couple of months has been Daily Parrying, which talks about why negative reactions like this can happen. That's all today for today from the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. My name is Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey.